Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our Marble Dub speedrun tutorial. Uh, we're going to get started right away with uh, our demonstration of a full speedrun, including uh, a bunch of the uh, skips and tricks that you can learn uh, that are going to help make your first sub hour time uh, and beyond a little bit easier. Uh, let's start with Hyran, who's going to get us started on chapter one. All right, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Hyran, as Age Dude said. Uh, I'll get started with some of the chapter 1 strats. So of course the first level of chapter 1, first level of the game, is learning to roll. One of the fastest strats you can do is sort of look at this sign here, do a jump start, move on through like this, and finish in under 5 seconds. There is one more strat you can do, uh, take it a little bit slower, you can sort of maneuver your way through these rocks like so. Pretty straightforward level, there's not really much to talk about here, um, but if you get a time of about 5 or 6 seconds, you should be raring to go. So the next level is learning to turn. Do you want to do a jump start here? Look at this point here. Do some camera movement like so. And sort of jump to the end like that. That's one of the faster endings you can do. And it's inher inherently pretty risky. So what I'll show you real quick is a bit of a uh, safer version of getting to the end. So same jump start. Except you just sort of hit that trim like so. And you finish just a little bit slower. You're only going to lose fractions of seconds here. So it's not too bad of a time loss. Uh, again, yeah. not really much to comment on uh, learning to turn there. Yeah, uh, I'm going to learn... chime in and say uh, you don't need to do any skips on learning to turn, obviously, for your if you're aiming for a sub hour time or whatever like that. But it's for so early in the run that it's very easy to reset uh, and without too much of a loss if you uh, you know if you do happen to mess it up. Yeah, so I agree with free. H dude there. Go yeah, for I, it. I agree. I agree with H dude there. Uh, the learning the, the the three learning levels at the start can be sort of a reset trap. Uh, so if you are feeling, if you, if you are starting to feel that when starting to speed run this game, try not to worry about these skips too much, uh, and maybe start to implement them once you get more comfortable with the game. Real quick, I will show you, uh, learning to jump. So you want to do a jump start here, head towards this rock, sort of turn into it like so. Oh, I fell off there. That's very awkward. <laughs> uh, that does happen sometimes. That's okay. Uh, you can take it nice take and it slow. Take it easy. Take it easy. Yeah. yeah. Take it slow like so, sort of slide off the rock like that. Watch for your spacing here and get to the goal in about 10 seconds or so. That's a respectable uh, time. Uh, precious gems. This one is also pretty leading with the route. You just want to get the gems in the right order. This is the first gem level of the game. So you want to do a bounce start here, two jumps into the first gem. You want to do a nice turn up this ramp, get this second gem up here next to the rock. You can do a jump or two here if you like the speed. A lot of players just like to hit that trim up there, but there are other options you can do to make it a bit faster. Do a nice left turn with that final jam into the finish. And uh, now move on to Savadra, who's going to talk about up the wall and some more chapter one strategies. Hello, Savadra again. Uh, we're going to start with up the wall. There is a very simple setup that you can do for the uh, faster time than just rolling all the way up the gravity surfaces here. What I like to do is sit at this tile behind the uh, behind the like gold tile uh, or the gold platform. You want to start rolling, jump at the seam line, bounce, and jump off of the trim. It is a little tricky to get the timing down initially, but once you get it down, it is very consistent. Nets you like a four second time every time if you just do it fast. It's not required for sub hour or even sub 50 but it is still a very easy time save to get on very early on moving on we go to super jump really the only thing for this level is you want to take the super jump and instead of going around these rocks over here and these platforms you want to just jump on the trim and then get a little bit of a rolling start and jump super jump just straight up to the goal just like that it's yeah, it's very simple, very easy. And for full speed ahead, we have an easy setup for around an eight second time. You can just do a jump start, do two, three, four, five jumps, roll, and then use the super speed after you hit the rock again. If you feel like you're not gonna make it over to the goal, you can land on the platform almost directly above you as long as you don't hit the ceiling. You also get a checkpoint, even though you can just super speed straight to the goal after that. But if you're feeling good with it and have a good angle on your camera, then you should be able to just super speed straight up to the goal, net yourself a seven second time, eight second time. And that's a pretty simple skip for full speed ahead on chapter one. Now on to stay frosty. We're gonna give age dude the mic 
for teaching you the rest of chapter one. All right. Uh, yeah, there's not much to mention with Stay Frosty. Uh, I will note for uh, Full Speed Ahead again, uh, like Savadra was saying, that camera angle that you have when you use the super speed is really going to matter a lot. Um, so even a little bit to the left or the right, uh, you'll notice a big difference uh, when you use that. So play around with it and get some practice. Uh, Stay Frosty, I'm going very, very slowly. You don't have to jump the whole time. Uh, you don't have to uh, do anything fancy. Really just uh, try to stay controlled and... Uh, you know, go as uh, slow as you need to to stay controlled the entire time. Uh, and that'll get you there, no problem. Uh, onward and upward, same kind of deal. Uh, we're going to focus here on, uh, you know, just uh, continuing to go forward, uh, getting our gems. And, uh, you know, at this point in the run, uh, if you're playing along, uh, just uh, uh, some of these uh, levels that are a little bit simpler... Uh, there's not too much to discuss, but I just want to encourage you, uh, again, take your time. Rushing is going to be the number one thing that's going to lose you time when you make mistakes uh, from rushing, for sure. Um, getting into Chapter 2 here, uh, we've got Duality. Again, don't do anything that's going to uh, put you at risk of falling off, so... If you know there's a gap coming up ahead, just take your time and roll up to it and take the jump. Um, you know, we speedrunners, we go fast all the time and uh, we have a tendency to fall into uh, gaps and stuff, even on simple levels like duality. Uh, now transit, there is a very simple skip that you can easily do. Uh, and this one, the only danger is falling off the far side. So what we're gonna do from the start is we're gonna roll forward. We're gonna try to jump off this corner right here and that'll take us to the next one. Uh, but you can see what I did there was uh, I slowed down by doing one of those natural bounces that Savada was talking about earlier. So I am jumping and I'm holding, uh, releasing the control stick or WASD if you're playing on a keyboard. Uh, and that will uh, force that hard bounce and slow you down quite a bit. If you don't do that, if you're holding back, you might still slide off. Uh, so try to practice that and learn how to incorporate it into your uh, speed running just because slowing down really is uh, more effective than going fast sometimes. Uh, and then the ending of uh, Transit, of course. I'm just going to jump right over to the goal. Yeah, just uh, to great on wall. The... Go for it. Just to comment on what Age Dude said there, uh, most times it's uh, when you're starting out with this game, it's more about having a sense of direction rather than uh, trying to get to that direction as fast as you can. So it's best to just maybe like slow it down if you're not sure about something or if you feel like you're going to slide too far and fall off the level. Uh, so definitely just pace yourself and, uh, you know, keep it cool. The improvement will come with time. Yeah, for sure. You can even see on Great Wall, uh, I know how to do that a lot faster, but I slowed it down and I made sure I knew exactly where I was going to land before I tried jumping over to that other wall because uh, that's what's going to help the most. Uh, Bump in the Night, this one, of course, um, it doesn't take very long to go all the way around and pick up the gem. However, there is an easy way to get this skip, and that's to... Basically, uh, sit on the side in between the gem and the bumper, and then just jump onto the bumper right here. And it will take you over right across very easily. Uh, there's all kinds of different setups we use. Uh, speedrunners can get that very quickly with very little setup, in fact. But uh, yeah, the easiest way if you want to do a skip is just to jump on it right here. Uh, let's pass it over to Hyran for Gardenwell. Alright, so this is over the garden wall. This is one of the most interesting levels of Chapter 2. Uh, so what we're going to do, do a bounce start here, jump on through here, start to hold right a little bit, sort of swivel the camera around all these hills, and then you want to sort of pan back a little bit, hold right, do a nice natural bounce there as we spoke about before, and sort of just crawl your way to the finish like so. Obviously there's much faster ways to get to the finish, uh, but you do risk going over the garden wall as the, uh, <laughs> as the level name suggests. Uh, so do make sure you uh, slow down, take it easy at the end, and uh, yeah, try not to uh, slide off the end or get hit by any of these uh, intrusive pillars in the background. Uh, so the next one I'm going to look at is Wave Pool. This is a tricky sort of gem level. So you want to start here, roll a little bit. You want to go like face backwards essentially. Do a couple of jumps here to build up a little speed. Turn in nicely there to get up this ramp. Turn here towards the direction of the time travel. You can roll over these little waves like so. Don't need to go too fast here. And you want to pick up this super jump, this is pretty important. Grab this gem here. Now, you can either super jump from here up to the gem up there, 
or you can safely go over to this direction here back to the flat surface and just safely super jump like so and then you want to do a nice turn here grab this gem of course time travels are not important in the uh, real time speed run so those are totally optional make it nice and easy towards this wave pool finish it's very easy to miss and just go to the goal like so and now big easy this is a very very fun thing to do so what you want to do first if you're playing a mouse and keyboard take your hand off the mouse before playing the level okay so during the speed run you may want to take your hand off the mouse uh, while entering the wave pool goal that's something that i generally like to do uh, if you're playing on controller uh, just keep your keep your fingers off the camera stick as much as you can um, and yeah what you want to do is enter the level by pressing space hold down forward and you want to do a bounce start here and keep jumping and make sure the only inputs you're pressing is forward and jump this is a little harder to do on controller than keyboard because you know the on keyboard these inputs are exact you know you're always like either holding at w in space or you're not whereas on controller it's a little bit it's a little bit less linear than that uh there are ways to get around that you can bind uh w to a d-pad button on your on your controller for example so if you do want to do this automatic start by the way uh you can do some research into how to bind those uh, towards the end of the goal here you will have to maybe uh, deviate left or right um, sometimes you know uh, you can get some strange movement on the final jumps there so just make sure you uh, move left or right a little bit so you enter the goal straight away instead of bouncing uh, on the rocks in the background uh, so the next level we want to look at here is archipelago the start's pretty lenient but i like to do a jump start followed by another jump delay this feather fall and sometimes you will miss it that's the, that's the nature of delaying power-ups like so so just delay it a little bit after that second jump there. Jump on this part of the ramp here, hold back a little bit in the air, and then sail towards the goal. You should finish in about 9 seconds or so. Um, maybe take some time to learn uh, what preferences suit your uh, your needs or your playstyle best uh, for doing this skip. So next we want to look at Triple Divide. Uh, I'll show you the easy route first. So you want to go left here on this sort of flat part. Take a nice three here. This is like, you could just take a nice stroll through here. There's not too many specifics as to what jumps you can or cannot do. And then the important part is getting up to this ramp here and heading towards this super jump. So you want to head towards this super jump, make it nicely through these arches, and you want to try and pick up some speed here. But if you don't feel comfortable with the sort of jumps that you get, uh, don't worry about, uh, you know, slowing down a little bit. And then you can use the super jump there as a nice little backup to make sure you get into the goal nice and safely. Now I'll show you the, oh, this is the incorrect level. Don't worry, we'll get to th uh, thread the needle very shortly. Uh, but I will now show you the faster start. So this is a This one's gonna start. take a little more practice. Yeah, this one's a bit finicky here. So what I just did there is pretty difficult. Uh, I did that very quickly. So let me try and slow it down and show you. Actually, I, oh, I, sorry, I don't have a replay for that. So I'm gonna hold forward. So I'm gonna hold forward, do a jump start and then swivel your camera about 45 degrees to the right uh which that's the first step start holding right and then jump at the peak there and then sort of get through here there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to do this pattern uh you can slow it down you don't need to do as many jumps at the start as i did there sail on through here start to turn nice and left here get a jump off this triangle here and then make your way towards the goal like i said there's much uh, slower versions of that uh, and i do recommend uh for new runners to take the left side uh start anyways because it is a lot easier and there's a lot less uh, mistakes to make even if it is a little bit slower so as we said before you can take it a little bit slower pace yourself and uh yeah without further ado let's look at thread the needle so thread the needle we'll do a bounce start here two jumps bounce on this and jump again that was a total accident there you're supposed to jump there but that's okay we still made it through first try so now this is the this is a bit tricky this part you want to grab the super jump uh, you can uh, sort of do this fast, turn in here and sort of jump uh, within these two blocks here, or jump and super jump within those two blocks there, up to there. Um, but if you're not feeling comfortable with that, get a nice run up, jump and super jump. There is some neat stuff you can do here with this super speed, and you can sort of traverse up to the next platforms pretty quickly. But if you're not feeling comfortable with that, of course, just super speed forwards, slow down, look backwards, and then head this way. This is pretty, this is pretty free fall, this part. And now this is the part you probably need to focus on a little bit. So you can, this is super jump here. We're going to use this for a skip. Of course, there's this checkpoint here, which I always recommend grabbing if you're a new player. Of course, I missed it, so I went back and grabbed it. You want to set up somewhere around here on this corner. Look up here, and your aim is to get up to that platform with the super jump. So roll forward a little bit, 
jump and super jump. It is a little bit tight, uh, but this it's a it's an easier skip than what else is available on this level. Um, but of course, as we got the checkpoint before, it's fairly low risk. Uh, so just take it slow. Uh, pay attention to how the uh, to the positioning on the platforms there, and then go from there. There's also a neat jump you can do in the middle of that platform movement I just did, uh, but that's not required. Uh, and at the end here, you can take it slow if you want, don't have to get all the super speeds at once, and finish the level like so. And that's all I have to say about Throw the Needle, and that's the end of Chapter 2. Uh, I will now pass on to Savadra, who will show some Chapter 3 strategies. Alright, so Chapter 3, we're out of the... We're, all, we're off to the races here. So, into Sugar Rush. The really simplest thing you can do here is just get through the level going around the entirety of the circle. I did a kind of automatic, not automatic, I did a uh, bit of an edge hit there, but you can just really roll through the thing if you so desire so that you don't gain too much speed and whip yourself off on the outer rings. That is something very easy to do when you're not paying attention. Uh, hit some walls if you fly towards them in order to slow yourself down. You can also do some natural bounces to slow yourself down. Like I did not do there because I hit the corner. Nice. That's better. And net yourself around like a 30 second time. There is a strat that is faster than this, but I would not recommend doing it for your first run or even really before you nail a sub 50. But I will show it to you just to have it for you to start practicing if you so desire but the Just essential the essential part of it is you want to roll to this hill with the time travel here and then you can roll backwards you can do about six or seven jumps six jumps into this wall and then at this final ramp you can do a jump roll and then collect the time travel and jump and you will pat up catapult yourself straight to the goal it's again not really necessary for like starting out your runs but it is good to start practicing because it is a bit of a good time save uh, in the earlier parts of the, of the run for elevator action i would really only suggest just doing uh the like sort of more effective diamond time route here which is grab that first gem and then fall down to this red platform we're going to get that second gem on the ramp later. Uh, but we basically just go through this and nab all of the other gems in the same order. But we fall down early so that we make sure we catch this red platform for the for this cycle. And then at the end here, after we get this third gem, we can just do a jump straight to this floating platform onto this last gem. And then just go straight to the goal. Net yourself around 40 seconds of time. And that's really all you would need to do for elevator action. Speedball is also relatively straightforward. I uh, do a jump start. Do two, nat three, four jumps. Nat bounces are great here. Nat bounces are great here. I like to do a nat bounce here personally. So that I can slow down on this ramp. And just roll it down and then just kind of keep yourself rolling the rest of the way through and not fall off at the goal because that is a thing that some people do sometimes i have also shot just couldn't be me just straight through <laughs> you just uh, shot straight through the uh the ending there trying to go too fast it happens sometimes but yeah then there is icy ascent which is fairly straightforward you can do a bounce and then two, three, four jumps, and then super speed up that half pipe or quarter pipe to the platform. If you get the jump pattern right, it is consistent 100% of the time. There's another skip that you can do here, which is the same start and similar jump pattern, but instead you jump off of the side of that uh, like entry ramp and then use two super speeds for just getting straight up to the goal. I wouldn't recommend trying that as it's not too much of a time save and it's a good bit harder to do, requires some better marble control, but, but it, it is, is very cool. It is very cool and it is also an option if you want to start in your improvement arc for uh, you know, sub 50 times. 
Now I will pass it on to Hyran for River Vantage. All right, so this is River Vantage. This is one of my favorite levels in the game. I think it's very mechanically interesting. So let me show you here. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do at the start. You can do a little bit of a delayed bounce start there and do some jumps up there like I just did. Um, but if you're not comfortable with that, the timing is a little bit a little bit rough. You can just do some nice little jumps up here and carefully just traverse this curve like so. Take it nice and slow. Don't, know, don't need to worry about any racing lines or anything like that. And then what you want to do is come up to this curve here, do a nice little jump up here and do some nice careful movement this way. This is a nice way to sort of keep your sense of direction while not losing too much speed. Uh, you want to wait for this platform here. You can roll onto it like I just did, but you can jump onto it for that insurance. Then jump off the second rad platform uh, onto these green curves. You want to do a nice super speed like so. You can do a little jump there to get a little, little bit more height. Uh, there's a checkpoint back here for some backup if you would like. Uh, one trick I like to do is do a jump like that off that first red curve onto the second one. Uh, to just, you know, skip going all the way around there like so. And then jump, super jump, to the finish. Fairly straightforward and fairly fun. So the next level I'd like to show is off Kelter. Uh, this is a very daunting level, has some very interesting gravity. Uh, I like to do a jump start here. Just sort of take it nice and slow. Maybe start to decrease your speed towards this checkpoint. Uh, and just be careful navigating these ramps here. Don't need to do anything too fancy for this level because it is fairly risky. There's another checkpoint there. Thankfully, the checkpoints are rather generous uh, for off-kilter. Just sort of take this gravity nice and slow. No jumps required at all. Just roll forward. There is another checkpoint there, which you will almost always grab. And swiftly navigate this geometry like so. Get to your time of around 34 seconds with little to no mistakes whatsoever. And it's not too difficult, so hopefully you have fun with that. And now we're looking at four stairs. You want to face this way, do a jump start, and then hold left a little to force a hard bounce there. You want to grab that gem there. You don't have to do that wall hit like I did. You can take it nice and slow if you like. Grab this checkpoint here, and then grab this gem in a similar fashion. And you want to come back to the checkpoint, swing around to the right, and go this way. Take these stairs like so. Grab the super jump, stop, and then jump super jump. Grab this gem like so. Take it nice and slow here, so I recommend sort of stopping after you do the jump and super jump. Then turn into this gem here, and then jump towards the finish. I will now pass it on to Age Dude, who's going to talk about Totally Tubular and some other Chapter 3 strats. Yeah, so Totally Tubular, I'm going to be doing a, a skip here. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do it, but you've probably found this one, uh, even in just your own uh, looking for uh, diamond times and stuff like that. What we're going to start with is a bounce start. Uh, going to hold forward, bounce, jump. And that's going to take us all the way off the first platform. And if you just continue holding forward, it'll take you all the way into uh, the uh, tube down here. Obviously, you're not going for any kind of uh, time travels or anything like that. Now, if you're able to get a launch up here toward the goal, I like to turn my camera a little bit sideways so I can see the trajectory of my marble. And that informs the timing when I use the uh, feather fall. And if you can do that, awesome. If you're not so comfortable with it, obviously, you can just do the casual route as normal. But uh, that one is very fun, and uh, just a couple tips for you to getting that one uh, consistently if you want to learn it. Uh, time capsule, again, this is going to look very different from what you do uh, in casual play when you're going for a diamond time, because we're not picking up any time travels at all. Uh, so we're going to start uh, from the beginning, picking up this gem above us. And we're going to go around this to flip upside down. Uh, this is a very easy route to uh, memorize because we just go upside down once and then we go to the right gonna grab these two gems and then we're gonna flip upside down one more time to get to the goal time capsule is one of those routes where i recommend having a video of the route off to the side while you're practicing a level because there are some parts that are easy to forget uh just because of you know how daunting the level can be in the way you sort of loop around uh in that sort of nature uh so definitely have a video off to the side if you do forget anything um and yeah yeah you don't want to get lost yeah hopefully the practice goes well uh yeah getting lost can be a very rough time loss <laughs> yep uh and cog valley i mean i'm sure you would uh love seeing the uh the speed runs of 
uh, Cog Valley and uh, some of the, the some of the skips that are available here. But we're going to take it nice and easy. Uh, focus on getting to the next checkpoint uh, and focus on not resetting if you do end up falling off um, <laughs> so that you can respawn at the checkpoint. Um, just kind of a general thing that happens a lot in for new speedrunners is they end up uh, restarting a level altogether when they die just before the finish instead of taking that checkpoint. Uh, so remember to uh, have a little bit of self-control there. And we're just going to climb up normally. It doesn't take that long. That takes to the end of the chapter three. And we're going right back to high end. Awesome. So I'm going to take everyone on a nice trip to chapter four. This is when things start to get a little bit complicated, but that's okay. You know, that's what this guide is here for. Uh, so we're going to start with bumper invasion, which is a uh, very scary looking level. So you want to do a bounce start here. Try to avoid these bumpers as much as you can. What I did there was sort of just hold back quite a bit in the air. Uh, just to make sure I don't hit anything. So get these first three gems, and then what I like to do here is grab this checkpoint, and then take this platform nice and carefully. You can jump across it like so, um, but you can also just ride it all the way to the end. Uh, you can see I'm sliding on the ice there, so I like to sort of travel up this trim. I did that very slowly, you can do a couple of jumps up there, but just be careful uh, you don't hit any bumpers, because they can send you off the level very easily. Now there is one bumper hit you can do here, uh, I like to line up here, sort of jump at the uh, edge of the slope. Of course, I missed it there. Uh, it's a pretty tricky hit, and I wouldn't recommend new players going for it. And, well, I probably won't go for it anymore either because I just missed it twice. <laughs> yeah, I, personally, I never do that bumper hit. I just uh, jump up the, up the slope and it works just fine. Yeah, uh, and so what you want to do here is obviously you can take the line immediately, immediately to this next gem. Obviously, there's a bit of risk there because you can fall down there. There's that bumper there. You can sort of go quick here and still get the checkpoint hitbox as I just did. But if you're not feeling confident, always come over here and make sure you get it. You can see that little tick up there to show that you got it. Um, but I sort of like to line up here for this uh, final gem. Go like this. Get on the ice ramp and jump on jump like that to hit off against the wall so you get uh, on some nice trajectory. Uh, you can take this a little slow too. Always use the trim to traverse levels like this. Uh, and yeah, you know, because ice is very slippery and sometimes you don't want that. Uh, so the next level I'm going to talk about is Braid. This is also a very mechanically interesting level and also one of my favorites in the game. So there's a lot of strats you can do here, but I'm going to show you the easiest one. So you want to start, you want to look a little to the right and do a jump start. So just keep jumping like so. You want to jump off this and then get a hit off there like that. This will slow you down a little bit, that hard bounce, and you'll almost always get that. And then just want to make it towards the checkpoint like so. Slow down a little bit here and grab the one gem. And you want to take the left path here. There's three paths, the left, middle, and right. You want to take the left, drop down to the middle like so, grab this super speed. And then off the left path, you want to jump once, and jump once on the middle path, jump, hit the rock, super speed. It's sort of similar to what we saw in full speed ahead earlier, which is also one of my favorite levels. Uh, you want to slow down here a little bit, jump and super jump to the end. You won't always make that jump super jump, but there is a second super jump uh, on the middle platform there to help you uh, back that up. So the next one we're going to look at is Sunspire. Another very mechanically interesting level, but also a very, very challenging level. So let's have a look at it. You want to do a, uh, sorry, a bounce start here. And you want to jump, natural bounce, slow down a little bit on this platform, line yourself up like so, and jump across to the purple area. Get on this blue platform nice and quick, and then jump off it also nice and quick. Head this way like so, jump pattern there is very important, so jump and then roll on those humps. You want to leave this platform like so, this can be very tricky, so don't fret if you don't get it. And then you want to jump up here and make it to this red platform for something that we like to call the 24 cycle. It is pretty tricky to do, and it is pretty daunting, but there is a couple of things you can keep in mind if you miss it. So number one is, of course, there's a checkpoint there, as you may have seen. So if you do die here or something, that's okay. You can just respawn at that checkpoint, so don't reset. And if you just miss the platform altogether, that's okay. One of the options you can do is wait for it to come back, or you can get that red platform over there in the distance. Uh, either way, you should make it up the rest of the level uh, pretty easily. You will have to wait a little bit if you do miss the cycle initially, but that's okay, as long as you get up to the top and don't lose your sense of direction. You can do this jump over here to this blue platform like I did, or you can just wait for the red platform to get all the way up. That's totally optional. One of the most important parts of this level is platform exit, so essentially leaving the platforms as fast as you can. Obviously you don't need to do that, but if, you will, if you're on a crunch for time, it is a nice thing to keep in mind. 
So that is Sunspire done. You should get that done in just about a minute. Uh, but if you get the 24 cycle first try, it should be around about 45 seconds, 46. It really depends on how you do the ending. There's a lot of places where you can lose a lot of time on Sunspire. So don't feel discouraged if you uh, go a little slow here. Just uh, try not to die and remember your center direction. So the next level I'd like to discuss is Epoch. So you want to do a jump start here, turn a little here, do another little jump and get up this hump nice and safely. Get to super speed, do a couple of jumps there, grab this gem and turn left. Try not to slide on that rock. Grab the second gem here, roll down to the lower section, do a couple of jumps, build up a little speed, and then do some jumps off this ramp. Of course, I missed it, as you see, but that's okay. There is a backup here, and of course you have the super speed in case you uh, need some insurance there if you lose your way or if you feel like you're going to fall off the level. So grab this fourth gem here. I'm going to use this super speed to get to the end a little quicker. It's really easy to over overshoot that last gem there. Uh, so slow down a little bit if you feel like you're going a little too fast. Uh, so yeah, that's about it for Epoch. There's a lot of different routes you can do. Find what you think is the best, but what I just showed you is generally uh, nice to follow. So I'm going to hand it over to Savadra now, who's going to talk about Retrograde. Okay. So Retrograde Rally is a relatively straightforward level but there are a couple of skips you can do and this is going to take a little bit to show off but i mean as for the start here this like general jump pattern it's kind of freeform whatever you do the most important part about retrograde rally is just not dying so even just getting through the level like normally uh you can you know do, you can just do the level normally, do a bunch, save a bunch of time, not dying, uh, even just get up here and like keep your speed going for the fall down. Uh, if you want to stay fast, I would recommend like not trying to jump all over the level because you can lose control, especially on these turns. These turns are very hard to like keep control on, uh, but these straightaways uh, go hog wild as long as you don't fall in the hole. This ending is a little difficult to like actually nail down optimally, but again, if you just stay rolling, uh, then you will stay on the platform. You will be okay. And I would also suggest like natural rolling, uh, natural bouncing on the black parts if you go high, so that you can try and recenter yourself as you're, uh, you know, keeping some of your speed, but not, you know, falling off of the level. As for doing the skips, there are two setups for the skips that you can do uh, in like this particular part of Retrograde. There is an easier setup, which I will show you, and I will also show the slightly harder setup, the more fluent setup that most of the higher level speedrunners use. But both of these will save time. This will save less time than the other one. But what you want to do is kind of roll yourself to around this start of these, uh, this set of triangles and then roll yourself into the black platform, use your super speed and hold jump and keep holding forward and you will basically propel yourself all the way up to the upper level and right up to the next checkpoint of which you can continue the level from there and get back max speed is there's a super speed right there or a couple super speeds right there the second way that you can do this by not like having to stop in your tracks and set this up uh, as soon as i can rewind back there is you know getting my speed is just kind of flowing into it from this bottom ramp down here just keep your speed and uh, slow down a little bit rolling up this ramp and start your tur start turning into the black platform and do a super speed up the black platform you want to keep your speed just a little bit more uh, in order to actually make it up there but this is kind of a more seamless way to do the skip you have to do it from the other side and you will keep more of your speed by doing so and so it is overall just faster as a skip technique that is all for retrograde rally though i will now move on to gearheart which has a number of routes you can take uh i messed up there for a second but as for the f like simpler route 
I would suggest going for these ice gems first and then just kind of going counterclockwise around the level. If you're fast enough, you can make this uh, platform cycle for these risers. If you're not, just wait a cycle, not a whole bunch of time lost at all. Get the gem at the top, then gem at the bottom, roll over to the seesaw platforms, and grab the gem at the bottom, and then the gem at the top. The gem, at the, the, the gem order for these last two really doesn't matter, because you're going to be falling into the goal anyways. You can either fall in from the top there, or fall in from the bottom on that slope platform. And it will net you around a 40 second time. It's not the uh, not the fastest route, but also not the slowest route. Uh, they messed up my menuing nice. <laughs> but on to Acrophobia. Uh, this one is also a relatively simple, straightforward level. Uh, there's a RTA like beginning that people use here, uh, but I'm not going to show that because you can just roll around the wider uh, tight ropes and just get to the first gem. It is fairly simple. Then roll around the bend, jump down the straight, avoid these bumpers. Sometimes these bumpers are hard to avoid when you're going fast, so if you need to slow down here, then by all means do so. And take a little bit of extra time, make sure you don't fall off of the tight rope here. And that should be good for Acrophobia. There's really all there is there. And now for Dire Straits. There's one thing you can do here, but it's honestly not that much faster than just going through the level normally, making sure you, you know, don't die. But I'll show it off anyways. Uh, the thing you can do here is take the super jump and then go along the, like, go back to the ramp here, and then super jump off of the ramp to the checkpoint, and land safe so that you're at the checkpoint and can just roll into the next few gems while avoiding the basher cycles. Because these basher cycles are a little hard to avoid if you aren't confident in your timings, but that is also arguably why, like, just going through the level normally is better for newer runners because if you're not confident with the timing then you're not going to really be able to get this down but if you can learn at least this first set of bashers uh effectively then you can save a couple of seconds on doing that backwards route at the end of the day though if you can do the forward route like faster then it is still faster than doing the backwards route and so that's why i don't recommend learning that unless you are desperate and need more time to learn the basher cycles for dire straits that will be all, all right. for that we'll t give it to age do for ex machina yeah so we're gonna have a quick look at like, ex machina and this is one of the levels you are gonna have to practice a few times uh, before you're able to get a, a route that is going to be consistent for you. But uh, it is very, very simple. Uh, it just takes uh, a little bit of adjustment to learn. Uh, so we're going to do a route that only takes three jumps in total. Uh, and then the first one is going to be right at the beginning. We're going to do a bounce and then a jump. Uh, and then we're going to roll off the platform and use these uh, feather fall right away. Uh, as you can see, I did there. And now we just do one more jump. And we just roll off these next two rollers and then a third jump. I'm going to have to show you that another time. Uh, again, there's only three jumps in total. We're going to be doing jump one. Feather. Roll here. Jump two. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. And jump three. It's very, very straight. You're going to be holding almost forward the entire time, only making some small adjustments. To try to roll underneath that gap and go over this a few times make sure you have it well practiced um and then uh you know when the time comes you do your run you'll have picked up those checkpoints as well by doing this uh route and um that will come in handy for sure uh diamond in the sky there's not much fancy that i would recommend you try to learn here I mean, if you've done this as far as getting the gold time or the diamond time 
then you know you can build up a fair amount of speed here uh but the only real loss of time that you're going to encounter here is if you fall off the edge so yeah, just try to make sure you stay controlled uh use those natural bounces if you're ever going to land on um a surface that's going to bounce you off in a direction you don't want it's okay just let go of the control stick let go of w a s and d uh let yourself bounce naturally and it will slow you down a little bit as well so you can regain control uh just a note as well when you do those natural bounces it's going to uh, make you bounce off a little further in the direction of your spin than it would otherwise uh and that's a good thing because you can control the direction of your spin of course uh so make sure your marble is spinning in the direction you want to go and uh do those natural bounces whenever you need to regain control uh and then we're going to start off chapter five with newton's cradle uh Again, Newton's Cradle is one of those uh, levels. I'm just going to encourage you to be patient. Wait for the new, uh, wait for the cradles to come back to you, um, and just ride them uh, one at a time. Obviously, uh, this is an easy skip that everyone will have found in their casual playthrough. Just jump across them one at a time. Uh, as you improve, as you get better at this game, you can certainly find, uh, you know, new patterns in the cradles and ways that you can jump to avoid them altogether but honestly this is going to be your safest bet for quite a long time um yeah that's pretty much it uh as we're finishing up we're going to be handing over to Archiarchy by hyran and he's going to show you some of the strats that you can use for that particular one well i look forward to it there's a lot of interesting things you can do in Archiarchy. Uh, it, it, is, it is a behemoth of a level, as you can see on my screen here. There is lots of different turns, platforms, and hills to climb. Uh, but right now, I will show you uh, one of my favorite ways to traverse all of these obstacles. So what you want to do is look backwards, do a jump start, and head towards this platform. Ride the platform for a little bit. You can exit early, like I am here. Roll up carefully and grab this first gem. Now, this platform here is a little tricky. Um, you will need to sort of delay your approach to this next gem over here. Um, and there's a few ways to do that, but the way I like to do it is get on this platform, wait a little bit, roll forward and jump like so, and then fall down like that. That gives you a lot of height there, so there's a lot of room to work with. Grab that gem there, carefully, uh, carefully turn this way. Slow down here for this feather fall, you will need this later. And fall down, grab this gem. And then... That little jump pattern there, you don't have to do that. That's pretty leading that way. And now here's where the options get interesting. So you can roll this way, turn a little bit, jump and further fall like so. Grab that gem, head towards this further fall, jump and turn this way. There's a checkpoint there you can grab. I'm going to ignore it for now. Jump off here, hit the side of this platform with that edge hit, and then further fall upwards to the goal. So that's one option you can do. Uh, I'm going to rewind and show you something a little bit faster that you can do, although it is a little bit tricky and will take some uh, serious practice. Uh, so you may want to, of course, use this rewind tool and maybe try this a few times in practice. So, jump in feather fall, same as normal. I uh, see I'm, I, I will have to rewind here because I keep screwing it up. This It's it's landing on this gem that's tricky. You want to sort of brush, brush off the hill like that as you pick up the gem, which sometimes is a lot harder than it looks. Jump off the flat path there, roll off the hill like so, and then grab this gem, jump off this hill, and get to the platform. I'll rewind one more time. I know this is taking a while, but I will, I will rewind to show one more option that is a lot easier. So what you can do, instead of using the feather fall like that, is roll over to this blue platform off to the side, roll a little bit, and then use the feather fall or you can even jump uh, off said platform as well. Of course, the secondary feather fall here is nice as a backup for a slower ending. I do think this ending looks a lot nicer though. And then you get up to the goal, like so. This only took about a minute because I had to go back and explain some things, or maybe stop and look at some things, but this should take you about 50 seconds or so, or maybe a little bit less uh, if you want to incorporate some of the more tricky stuff there. So now the next level we're going to look at is, well, there's a lot to talk about this level, but there's not a lot to do. This is staying alive, and this, yeah. is, the, this is the auto-scroller level of my world up. So let's take a look here. You want to do a rolling start and just roll onto this first platform. That's the fastest way to get on there. And you just want to sort of roll through here and keep rolling. And, uh, and you can probably keep see rolling. What you, 
you can see where this is going. <laughs> yeah, uh, this, this is a this is a great time to take a drink and uh, enjoy your break from uh, intense speed running. Definitely. So there's a couple options here you can do while going through this level. You can take this platform all the way and avoiding those uh, red cubes like the bashes. Uh, well, yeah, they're, they're called bashes. They're pretty. Uh, they get in your face. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this beam nice and slow, holding forwards and occasionally tapping right while moving my camera over like so. You don't have to do this, you can just ride the platform through. This is uh, purely but, a flex. You know, yeah, you know, you can yeah. Just, you can you just don't, take don't this do beam. this, guys. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can always take the blue platform. Uh, but I like to wait over here on this island. This is my private island. I, I like it quite a lot. So I sit on this tile here and I take a drink. Uh, and then I wait for the platform. Uh, doing this, the platform comes over to this point at around one minute and six seconds on the timer. Of course, this may not apply to you because you just may take the platform uh, as normal. So now I'll re-enter the platform and jump to the end like so. Of course, there's a lot of different ways to navigate these obstacles. Uh, find something that works for you. Most of it is just uh, managing spin control, uh, doing careful jumps. Uh, you can do two jumps there instead of one, like I uh, like I did. And then doing this, you finish the level in about a minute and twenty seconds or so. Um, so yeah, that's uh, this is definitely the point in the run where we're about halfway through, where you can take a drink or maybe stretch a little bit uh, once you uh, find a nice spot to uh, you know take some time to enjoy the scenery. Uh, so the next level we're going to look at is Gordian, and this is a fun level if you like to turn. So you want to do a bounce start here, a jump, and another jump. Which way do you turn? Always turn left. Always is, turn left. Yep, this is this is the gimmick of Gordian. You, you turn left at every stop. Just navigate this uh, gravity carefully because this gravity can uh, make you slide a lot. So it's best to maybe minimize your amount of jumps here and just sort of roll on through like so. Uh, we're going to pick up the sixth gem here. You can take these little jumps here nice and slow. Uh, sort of uh, roll forward, jump, and then as you're approaching the surface of these uh, rocks, I'm going to call them. Uh, sort of like hold back a little bit as you land. Now there is a neat, neat trick here called Gordian Edge Hit. It's very infamous. Uh, oh you gosh. do a couple of jumps here and you kind of get up there like so. I almost got it, uh, but I missed it. I don't recommend <laughs> going for that because as a new player, you may fly off the level on accident. So just uh, take this staircase uh, as described here. And then take a couple of jumps and get to the goal in about, about 50 seconds or so. Uh, and now I will pass on to Savadra, who will talk about Crystalline Matrix and some other fun Chapter 5 strats. Alright. Crystalline Matrix, we have a lot of crystals, we have a bit of a matrix, we've got a lot of ice. The important part for navigating the ice here is always keep jumping. You do not need to hold forward, you do not need to hold like any specific direction for navigating the ice here at all it's like you can maintain your speed in the air a lot better than you can just rolling on the ice and, and there's more so, control too to so just really take your time keep jumping and take it like you know one section at a time you will get to the level just fine don't die and you will be all right go through this middle section here and you can get up to this last checkpoint here in the case that you end up falling off you can restart there there's another checkpoint off to the right there but again jumping is your friend here you will clear crystalline in around 50 seconds around a minute but it's a lot better than like losing time to just dying because you slide slide off the ice uh, way too much contraption can also get a little bit confusing but I would recommend just staying on the first cycle here. Stay on the platform that's right in front of you as you spawn. Roll to the outer edge of the level. You can catch this checkpoint and you can also just roll straight up the hill in order to get up on this top platform. Wait a second and jump past that barrier and if you don't think you can make that, don't try for it. You can just go straight to the next little opening there. Finish contraption in around like 28 seconds. Reminder that I picked up a time travel. And so we subtract around four and a half seconds from our in-game time in order to factor for real time. And yeah, it's about a 30 second contraption. Very simple. 
very deathless. The checkpoint is the kind of like biggest saving grace as if you're not used to controlling the momentum on the moving platform, the checkpoint will basically be your halfway mark of the level. And so you can just restart there and just kind of take it slow. So we're uphill both ways. The only real thing to talk about for uphill both ways is like a little bit of an optimization in the middle part of the level. But other than that, the gem order here is grab the gem on that hill and then the gem against this wall. Roll back to the super speed. Super speed up the icy hill and kind of let yourself slow down in order to maintain control. Get this third gem and then take this super speed. And instead of going around the side, like after getting this gem, we're going to get this gem and then pop our super speed to this gravity platform. It is small optimization, but it saves a good amount of time, like seven or eight seconds, as opposed to going around. And then we can roll on the other side of that gravity after getting the gem in order to get to the super jump. You can also grab the checkpoint here if you're feeling a little scared, but you can super jump up to the gem above the checkpoint and then grab this gem. There is a bumper hit you can do if you want to learn it. I wouldn't recommend trying that as it risks falling off the level. You just roll around, go up the hill, grab the super speed, and go for the last gem, and then super speed to the goal. Make it in about a minute, 15 seconds, and it's not really that bad at all. For flip the table, we, we already showed off a route in the first part of this tutorial. I'm going to show off a secondary route for flip the table. If uh, you so desire to have a second route option. There's a number of route options for flip the table that can be like viable. It's really all just a matter of preference, but really major deviation here for the route is instead of going to the left on the fourth gem, you go to the right and you flip on the gravity platform right in front of your start and then grab these two gems at the back and then roll around to the other two gems at the front here near the goal and then at the ending here you can do this rock jump here an important thing to note is that a i mean this rock jump is fairly lenient if you hit either face you won't uh fly off and you will make it to the platform and hit the goal every time but another thing to note is that this rock is very well designed and is missing yeah. collision on one of the faces and so uh, <laughs> if you jump to the top face you will fall through the rock and you will die so i do not recommend doing that uh hit Don't the slants that. you will be all right and uh also if you if you do end up dying speaking of then there is a checkpoint that i had missed at the end of the level that you can use to back up the end of the level but if you die just i'll flip the, the table last gem just before the second to last gem but if you die on flip the table really at all uh just restart as the checkpoint puts you off the cycle and does not help you at all whatsoever yeah right that's all there is for flip the table on a vertigo with age dude yeah a vertigo um obviously i'm sure if you've played this game casually you know it's fairly infamous for its difficulty uh, I'm just going to recommend any uh, first time or kind of somebody who hasn't gotten sub hour yet uh, or even sub 50. You want to take this as slowly as you can. Uh, Vertigo is never going to be about uh, at most skill levels, never going to be about how fast you can go. It's about how few times you can die. Uh, and so we're, you know, we're going to take it nice and easy. If you're doing using controller, uh, you don't necessarily have to go full tilt all the time if you're using keyboard it's okay to tap your keys one bit at a time uh however there is one little thing here you can do it is optional but a lot of people find it actually makes this area a little bit easier you see where i'm sitting right after the second checkpoint i'm gonna roll forward uh and jump across this gap to the uh tight rope right in front of me i'm gonna do one more jump and the very neat thing is that it's gonna bounce me right over to this checkpoint it's actually very easy to do, very consistent. Uh, once you've tried it for yourself a few times, feel free to go over that a few times if you want to. Otherwise, you know, just roll through the level. Uh, but, you know, being careful not to jump or anything like that because 
If you jump while you're touching one of these trims, as I'm sure you know, it's going to send you off the side. Very uh, speedrunner friendly. Extra care with... Yeah. Very speedrunner friendly, for sure. Not. But, uh... We're rolling through here. Again, this is not a level where you want to jump or build up a lot of speed. It is just a level where you want to take it one checkpoint at a time. Uh, focus on what's directly ahead of you. Uh, and, you know, try not to get knocked off by these spinners on the way. Yeah, take your time with Vertigo. And uh, take your time with all of these levels. Uh, Warp Core, we're going to be... Uh, I'm going to be doing the same route that uh, Hyron showed you earlier. Again, uh, very... Easy to get a little bit excited on a level like this and go too fast around these gravity curves and end up falling off. Uh, so my big recommendation is, uh, you know, take it easy. Remember, there's no checkpoints on this level. And so you're going to want to do your best not to fall off. Uh, but nice thing here is it's easy to remember this route because you do have these uh, gravity curves to guide you. As long as you go uh, right at the beginning. There is a slightly faster route that you can do. Um, however, I'm going to leave that for a potential future part three, where we go over some more advanced uh, tricks and tips. Uh, however, for now, this is probably Ooh. your best uh, your best route to be looking forward to uh, in your sub hour to sub 50 runs. Uh, Pit of Despair is going to come next. And uh, honestly, just like um, a lot of these, this is going to look exactly the same way it did during your casual playthrough. Um, again, just staying alive is the name of the game on levels like this. So don't try to rush. If you see a, if you see a basher that's about to start sliding, don't race it. Just wait for it to go by. Uh, there's no need to rush these things. Uh, and get yourselves into trouble. Yeah, I agree. Uh, with levels like Pit of Despair and Dive Streets, like we saw before, sometimes it's just best to, you know, really keep a note of the Basher's cycles as well, and uh, make sure you know when they're going to move and where they're going to go. Uh, and sometimes, if you are, if you don't feel comfortable with that, if you're still really new to the game, just you know, give the Bashers some respect and just wait. It's always best to just wait and be, uh, and just you know, get that confidence that way. That's what I recommend. You will still sure. save time by doing that, as opposed to thinking that you have the cycle and then dying by doing so. Definitely. And just a reminder as well, when you're on that ice, that you, uh, if, as long as you keep jumping, you have air control, which is going to give you more control than uh, you would have by trying to roll on the ice. Uh, Danger Zone comes up next, and while we've already covered the finish here, uh, I mean, you can still die, you can still mess up at the beginning. Uh, so, you know, take your time, practice this as much as you can. Uh, this isn't how I normally start, uh, but uh, it's very easy to mess up. Chapter 6 in general, of course, uh, huge difficulty spike. Uh, hopefully, by this point, you've uh, played all the levels enough times that you at least know what to expect. Uh, but be patient with yourself. Um, everyone, everyone dies on Chapter 6, uh, and that is okay. Uh, just try to focus on... Uh, staying alive as long as you can and getting to the next checkpoint. I'm taking this a little bit slower than usual through this area. But either way, uh, the most important trick to remember here is going to be uh, the finish. Alright, so I'm going to do this uh, finish just like the way that Savadra showed you earlier. I'm going to roll and jump onto the checkpoint. Jump, jump, jump. And in this case, oh, I actually missed, but that's okay because I am going to show you uh, once again this backup. If you don't manage to get up there the first time, the best way to get up there is to get on top of this rock and we're going to roll off the rock. I'm not going to jump off the rock. I'm going to roll off the rock and then hold jump. So jump, jump, jump. And nine times out of ten, that's going to be enough to get you around the loop and up here with the super speed. You really don't want to use the super speed to get up this loop because the ending, as I'm sure you know, is very difficult if you don't know how to do this skip or if you don't have the super speed to do the skip. So let's go ahead and roll over here. Take your time with that. Grab this checkpoint and the gem. And now that you have this checkpoint, don't be afraid to go for this skip. Uh, 
even if you miss, it's okay. Just fall off, come back to the checkpoint and set it up again. I'm lined up to the bumper. I'm going to jump and bounce right before the ledge and use my super speed. Take your time, practice that. There's many different variations of the way that it can go after you land, but that will get you up to the goal. And I held back just because I wanted to show you again. Um, so I'm going to fall off. I'm going to show you one more time. Again, it takes you right back to this checkpoint, so there's nothing to worry about if you miss. We jump, bounce, delay, and use the super speed. And I'm going to have to do it one more time because I actually missed that time. But, <laughs> but again, it's fine. Oh, boy. Yeah, it happens yep. to the best of us. It happens to the best It happens of us. to everyone, but again, uh, it's very forgiving because of that checkpoint. So pay attention to your checkpoints as you get through Chapter 6. I passed yeah, it off to Hyran now for uh, Platinum Playground. All right, so this is Platinum Playground. This is the level with the most gems in the game, fun fact. And uh, it can be pretty confusing as to where to go. Uh, so hopefully what I showed now uh, can give you some guidance. So do a jump start here, slow down towards this first gem, grab this one, and grab this one too. Slow down here a little bit, grab this super speed, and head over to this ramp. Do a little jump here, and sort of skate up the ramp like so. It look, it's a lot easier than it looks. Grab this gem and turn around. There's a nice checkpoint here. It's a nice little backup. And what I like to do is grab this gem, turn around towards his time travels, sort of jump halfway in between that tile, and head this way. Pick up this gem, go towards this time travel, slow down on this tightrope. Grab this gem, this gem, like so. That jump pattern is a little bit unforgiving, but that's okay. You can practice it a little bit. So now that I have this super speed, I like to come over here. Uh, usually I turn in and do this quite fast. These are called wall gems up here. Uh, these are some of the most annoying uh, collectibles in, in the entire game. Uh, there's a lot of fast ways to get them. What I like to do is go wide, super speed, and sort of just try to land on them. Of course, I missed there, but that's okay. There's a super speed that spawns right here, so I can try once more. Get a little, little bit more of a run up. Go wide here, get a lot of height, and then land on the gem like so. So that's wall gem number one. What I like to do is come in here and grab this checkpoint, grab this super speed, super speed this way, and then land uh, on the second wall gem. There's a lot of different things you could do here. You could super use this super speed to get to the other side a little quicker, or you could just save it up if you like. Of course, I missed that gem there. You gotta be very careful. It's always nice to uh, slow down when you go towards this pit. And what I like to do is collect this gem, go wide, stop here, I roll, I jump at the base of this ramp and I jump again to get the gem up there. That's the Atari jump because this looks like the Atari logo. Uh, that's an unofficial name for that strat. You can come up here and grab this gem that's sitting between these two ramps in the air. You can either go below the ramps uh, or over uh, when you sort of fall off and grab the gem, but either way, it's fine. Grab these two gems here, super speed towards this way. This is optional. You get this gem up here, sort of slow down. You don't have to turn the camera like I did. And then super speed and jump to the finish. There's some optional stuff in there. If you feel like you want to make some stuff easier, don't be afraid to do that. And of course, practice some of the uh, more niche movements uh, in this level because they can become really important. And if you follow the route like I did uh, and don't do as much explaining or stopping as I did, you should finish in about a minute and 30 seconds on the in-game clock. Uh, and now let's pass on to Radius, one of the prettiest levels in the game. So for Radius, <laughs> you kind of see it well it's a kind of like weird gravity puzzle tunnel type thing uh as for like most of these levels in the last part of this game take it slow take your time don't try and rush ahead of cycles if you're not confident in them i did do a bit of a faster start there but again you can again just take it slow do the jumps slowly uh get your your the important part about radius here is setting yourself on the proper gravity to continue to the next part of the gravity uh or uh, next part of the stage and so like if you set yourself on the right gravity then you won't have a hard time like you know fighting against the slopes here and that's kind of what the that's kind of the important part here you just go to the far sides and don't fall off like i just did by missing the cycle uh, again, this is why you don't rush the cycle if you're not confident. Uh, even if you are confident sometimes, you just want to take it slow, give yourself an extra second. And get through the last part of the stage here by using the super jump and 
also like jump super jump technique. Uh, give yourself that extra height in order to uh, give yourself more room to like aim your landing uh, so that you don't fly off of the platform by like you know hitting the gravity in a weird way because gravity interactions can get a little tricky sometimes but yeah uh around like a minute 20 finish a uh, minute 30 finish is absolutely fine for radius uh a lot of these levels you will take a little more time on again they're more like executively difficult you just want to not die is the major part of chapter six here for head in the clouds you want to try and stay on the same cycle every time i will try and teach you to uh the like uh most optimal cycle to stay on like uh in order to have the easiest time should net you around like 50 seconds but you do two jumps there roll two jumps there and then get to this platform and try and take off at around nine and a half seconds in order to get up this ramp here uh if you want to take that a little slow because the sway can be a little difficult that's fine but i would say that it's easier to try and just get to that second swaying platform first dodge the walls here on the blue platform and do two jumps to bash to avoid those barriers and this swaying platform honestly you take your time again like follow the cycle note the cycle and just kind of play with the sway and you will be okay as for this ending section here i just kind of went forward and didn't really think about it there is a particular jump pattern you can do to make this ending section easier but you just do one two and three and on this third jump here try and hold a little more to the left so that you anticipate your bounce on the exact like timing of the sway that should help control your marble and not fall off like i just did and should net you around again a 50 second time on head in the clouds which nice. is <laughs> not too shabby for a first run especially considering that before that and assuming that i didn't have to rewind we wouldn't have died and another thing another level where you just don't want to die some triple force especially because there's no checkpoints on this level so you really want to not die on this level take your time go around the circle if you need to do two jumps in order to get to this first gem you ideally want to turn around and go for that second gem right away but you can just kind of play parallel with uh this platform here in order to kind of put yourself on the proper cycle to line these gems up and just start going more towards the outside that jump was a little risky i wouldn't recommend doing that nor that one but uh the, there are platforms that will give you an easier time some of these platforms are ice and if you follow the same advice from earlier as in like keep jumping in order to maintain control on the ice this is to stay still on the ice but it will still be helpful nonetheless and when transitioning between platforms try and get to as close to the next platform as possible when going outwards you want to try and get to the uh, outer side of the platform and when going inwards you want to go to the inward side of the platform and again take it very slow do one platform at a time you will be just fine let yourself a silver time it doesn't matter that's in-game time is not important for uh rta now on to escalation i will give it to age dude to teach you how to tackle this very tall, very daunting level. Very tall and very daunting indeed. Um, Escalation, of course, is very well known for uh, the biggest skip in the game, which is called the kickflip. Um, you don't need to do that, okay? Uh, for Especially for your first uh, full game RTA run or anything like that. Uh, you can play through this uh, relatively casually, uh, as you would have done when you were going through for your diamond times, uh, as it were. Um, however, there are some tricks and tips that you can use uh, if you do want to learn kickflips. Uh, and I will show you those in a moment. But first, I'm just going to demonstrate um, a couple things to do if you're not doing kickflips. Um, and just generally getting through here, 
Uh, there's nothing special if you're not doing kickflips. Uh, you do want to make a note that uh, these platforms that do flip over that are connected to each other, uh, as soon as you touch one, it's like uh, the one that's connected to it will also turn over. Uh, so you want to be prepared for that. Uh, you really... Whoa. Kind of messed that up myself. Let me uh, go back and show you that again. Uh, what you would like to do when you're touching these platforms uh, is just jump onto them and jump right off. You don't need to roll onto these at all. Uh, there we go. You can see what I'm doing here. You just one jump and jump right off. Just hold that down to that jump button. And you don't have to worry about uh, whether it's going to be turning to the left or to the right because uh, you'll already be off the platform by that point. Uh, same thing goes for these two, except, of course, uh, they're connected to the ones further down. You only need to touch them once in order to activate them. Uh, if it does happen that you don't activate them or anything else uh, of that nature, uh, and you end up waiting too long, uh, remember, you can tilt these just by touching the side of them. Uh, give that a moment to reset. There we go. Yeah, even just touching the side of these platforms will cause them to flip over. And that'll get you to where you want to go. And then from here, it's, uh, you know, you're just going to roll to the finish as you did before uh, in your casual playthrough. Uh, so I am going to show you, uh, I guess, the easiest kickflip that you could learn. Again, this is very optional, especially if you're just looking for your first sub hour time. But the easiest kickflip is the one that goes to the finish. And it's right here after the final checkpoint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here and jump again and... You see how the platform just kind of knocks you up uh, up toward the finish? That is uh, something that should be relatively easy to learn if you've already learned how to, you know, at least reach all the diamond times and whatnot. Um, let me go ahead and fall off here so I can demonstrate that again. And you do want to make sure if you're falling off and or if you miss this kickflip or if you fall off at any time on escalation, the biggest thing to pay attention to is that you don't land on a checkpoint below because if you do, then... Uh, it's going to overwrite your checkpoint above, and you definitely don't want that. So again, if, as long as you jump with the right timing, and you can practice this a little bit, but again, being on a checkpoint makes it a lot easier. And that's going to apply to the other check, uh, other kickflip that I'm going to show you as well, which is going to be down below. Um, so we just drop down here and land on this checkpoint, as I've already taught you not to do. Uh, for the purpose of demonstrating this, uh, this is what we call second kickflip, although the first kickflip is uh, definitely going to be too difficult unless you're already in the sub 45 uh, kind of time frame or even sub 40 maybe. Uh, what we're going to do here um, is not super easy, but it does save a lot of time. Like, it could save you over a minute. Uh, so even if you mess it up once or twice, that's okay. I'm going to teach you an easy setup to get this checkpoint with a super jump so that you can get up nice and high. You want to jump over this first platform uh, without touching it, ideally. And if you do that, you can touch the other two platforms. And that'll get you uh, across to this super jump. Oh, I fell off. Great. So uh, very easy to do. If you do fall off, just reset like this. I haven't done this setup for the, uh, for the checkpoint in a while, but I'm sure you guys will not have any troubles with it. Ah, uh, yeah, just jumping across one at a time. Now, if you do fall, I, I did manage to get onto this platform with the super jump without falling off. But if you do fall off and you fall down here, uh, you're not going to be able to activate this checkpoint again. So just jump back up using that jump super jump technique. And we want to trick the game into giving us the ability to use that checkpoint again. So we're going to do another jump super jump, another jump super jump till we get the checkpoint above. grab a super jump and now when we grab this checkpoint below now we get to keep that super jump even if we use it and then die uh, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get up there the check uh, kick flip is the same as the one i just showed you um except as soon as you get hit by the platform then you're going to be doing a super jump so let me go ahead and demonstrate one of those just like that and that got me way up here skipped so much of the level and you know what? Even if I were to fail that once or twice, it would be okay. Um, there are some variations. This is optional, but it is very cool. It is very fun to learn. And even if you die a few times, you might still end up saving time. Anyways, that's yeah. all I have for uh, 
escalation for now. Let's uh, hand it over toward Hyren. Cool. So I'm going to look at Confluence. Now, this is probably one of the scariest levels in the game, uh, mostly because it has zero checkpoints and it has these destructors down here towards this gem uh, that can uh, suck in your marble very easily. Uh, and once you do that, you'll have to start from the very beginning. Uh, so this is quite a uh, quite a daunting level for many reasons. And also there's lots of uh, maze-like properties to this level. But let's get into it here. The way that I like to do is look backwards and go this way towards the gravity. The start's pretty lenient. Uh, As we did in part the... one. Yeah, of course. And getting over the, the apex of those curves, I like to let off the controls a little bit so I don't slide off. I grab this first gem here, and then I look down, I fall off and grab the second one here, bounce and reach this gravity here. I roll here and make sure I'm nice and flat with the surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll forward and then that bounce like so off the wall and grab the gem and fall down to this gravity here, being careful to not fall off. It's nice to just take it nice and slow there because it is pretty easy to die and lose a lot of time. So the next part is you want to come into this gravity, fall down, grab this feather fall and start holding forwards. You don't have to do that quite as fast as I did. You can always take it a little slow and just land down there nice and safely and then jump over to the gem. But it's really up to what you're most comfortable with. So grab the fourth gem here, you want to look down at this fifth gem, fall on it sort of like we did with the previous uh, one of the previous gems, fall like so. One option here is to sort of hold forward when you get close to this gravity and then sort of uh, hold right into it and sort of land on it like so. So I'll just show that one more time. So you fall here, don't spin at all, bounce, start holding forward, and then hold right into the gravity to land on it like so. That can be pretty difficult, so I'll show you a safer setup now. So same thing. Fall to the gym, and this time you can hold a little bit forward but slow down and just stop here towards this uh, trim here and fall down, hold right. It is a little bit risky, you do slide quite a bit, that's the nature of gravity, uh, but you can make it nice and safely. Now there's a few options for the ending here as well. You can jump from this point here, use the feather fall, grab the gem like so, slide across the wall, bounce and go towards the goal, or you can do something a bit safer. So what you can do instead is roll over here, nice and safely. And then just fall down, use the feather fall, grab the gem, be careful of the destructors, and then head to the goal like so. And that's generally the gist of Confluence. Try not to lose your direction, try to keep you cool, and uh, just, you know, remember you don't have any checkpoints, so you really want to make every movement count. And now we're moving on to the largest level in the game, the big behemoth. This is Olympus. Hooray. Olympus, indeed. It's big, it's long, it's the longest level in the game. It is quote unquote unique in that it has two sections that are exactly the same in geometry. Huh. And I will be a little personal here. I don't like this level. This level Neither is honestly I. my least favorite level to speedrun in the game. But as for just kind of getting through it, what I like to do is pretty much use my nap bounces to control where like my marble is kind of along the line of the level as much as possible. There is no such thing as too many nap bounces in this situation. Like right there, that was a nap bounce. That would but have- But you can't have too much speed for you can't, sure. You can't have too much speed, but the nap bounces in particular here are very good for the, as the age dude mentioned earlier, the spin control, the direction of which you bounce, which lets you stay along the level geometry more towards the center than not, but are just also just very good for kind of staying on the level, not leaning towards either of the sides, not hitting any of the rock obstacles, and flying yourself off to the edge. And if you do, then typically nap bounces can save you in a lot more situations than you may be prepared to try and save yourself in. And so stay low to the ground, nap bounce, use like your friction, your spin, and navigate the level. Try not to die. If you die once or twice, it is okay. Uh, you can still like get out of Olympus with around like a three minute, even a four minute time in some situations. And it will still be okay. Like there, I just died because I'm epic and cool. But it's gonna feel a little well. bit random sometimes. It is, it is, 
it does have that element of just kind of being, you know, random having these uh, polybrush surfaces, we call them the smooth surfaces that like, you know, try to emulate being being smooth, but are, are realistically just a collection of like hundreds of faces in like nearly the same point. And so the smallest of differences in movement and adjustment can, uh, can result in vastly different results in terms of bounce collisions and whatnot. So yeah. again, it certainly be patient. makes for Makes for an unpredictable level for sure, but try and keep your cool, even with a couple of deaths. Uh, you know, you can sort of get used to the level as you keep going. As I said, even with two deaths, you can uh, have a respectable time. Like, I'm getting towards the goal here. I'm finishing in under three minutes, even with a few deaths and a lot of uh, mistakes, you know, hitting a lot of rocks on, along the way and, ro and whatnot. So try not to feel too bad if you uh, do make a mistake, because it is quite easy to do on Olympus. It is a challenging level for a reason. Uh, but my advice is to sort of maybe play the level over and over again, uh, try and get diamond time, see how many times you can get diamond time, and try and see what sort of paths lead to the best sort of direction for you, and try and get used to the gaps and different pits and whatnot, and see what kind of jumps, snap bounces, or slides are going to get you to where you need to go, and yeah, that's, that's generally, I think, the way that I'd like to approach it. Mm-hmm. Now we can cover Tangle once more with more All of right. the age dude connoisseur content i'm only going to show you exactly the same route we did before uh this is a route that uh kind of benefits you if you uh either a are playing on keyboard because you can just hold w for this start or if you have a controller um and you're able to hold straight forward uh again if you have a controller with a notch or a like a gamecube controller or something like that it's a lot easier but um you really want to be aiming for the right side of this uh, orange spinner. Do a bounce start and a jump, and it's fairly automatic to get that checkpoint. Again, it might take you a few tries to get the checkpoint, and that's okay. Uh, the important thing is it, that it's going to get you up to this super jump, and that's what's going to make this a lot easier than even beating uh, Tangle casually. Again, we're just going to follow the same route as before. This isn't dependent on any kind of cycles. We're just going to jump up here and grab this super jump. You want to be careful not to touch those spinners up above you, but it's relatively safe if you can avoid them. Once we grab our gem down to the checkpoint again, and remember on the way back from this roll, we're going to do three jumps, starting on the roll down, one, two, three, and then the super jump right away. One, two, three, super jump, and there's lots of room for adjustment there to finish up Tangle. And for our finale, and right back over to Mr. Savadra once again. The last level in the state in the game, the home stretch. And we go pretty fast here, just do four jumps and roll at the super speeds and use the feather fall immediately. In the same way that you can hold jump to uh, uh, jump immediately as soon as you bounce, you can also just hold the power up button immediately in order to. Uh, use the power-up as soon as you collect it, but do some rolls there in order to get through that first loop and uh, Just roll through it just fine You will bounce here probably but that's okay and there is a skip we're gonna do here. It should be relatively simple for the earlier portions of play, but we grab this second checkpoint after that gravity loop here we're gonna super speed into that, grab that super speed on the way in, and just have a bunch of speed going into that. And this is gonna be an easier setup for the skip that we like to call gravity skip. Within what we basically try to do here towards the end is we try and fall into this bottom loop and just like kind of land clean. There is a way you can like land uh, cleaner than I did, but if you get stuck in this bowl, uh, you try to try to have a super speed in your back pocket in order to back this up uh, If you don't you can just kind of roll along to Chevron and You know kind of build speed up that way, but having the super speed there in order to recover does help tremendously and After that grab the gem and use the feather fall to the last section. I like to do four five six jumps here and then just roll and continue along this loop and then at the end try and veer to the left here avoid that rock 
and then veer back into the middle for this last loop. Depending on where this like particular rock cycle is, depending on what time you have, if you uh, spend too much time in a different part of the level, you will have to play that section differently. But chances are, if you're not at that point at the time that I got in, then you should be able to uh, just run that in a in a straight shot and then do uh, super do your super speeds and feather fall into the final bowl. And congratulations, you have now finished your MIU RTA speedrun. Yeah, yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, that was a lot of fun. Thank you to uh, Hyran and Savadra for uh, doing this tutorial with me. And, uh, you know, viewers, if you're doing these runs, just remember a lot of these skips and tricks that we've been showing you are optional. So give them a try yourself uh, and, you know, incorporate whatever into your run that you're comfortable with. Um, you know, a lot of these tricks are a lot of fun and, uh, you know, Marvel Up speedrunning in general can be a lot of fun. So we're, we're very happy to have you getting started on this, uh, on this journey with us. Yeah. It's always great to see new runners try this game out and hopefully, uh, hopefully you try the game out and hopefully we see you in the official discord, discord.gg slash marbled up. Uh, there's a lot of fun to be had over there. So, uh, hop on over and, uh, yeah, say hello. We'll see you there. Take care and good luck. Happy rolling.